Okay. So we're going through 2017, Calc AB number four. Um, and again, you always want to read these carefully. So it's telling you at time zero, we got some potato that has a 91 degree temperature inside. Okay. Um, it's left outside to cool. Well, it also says it's always better than 27 degrees Celsius, which means that's the room temperature, right? The potato is going to cool down to room temperature. Um, and the internal temperature of the potato at time T can be modeled by H where they give you this derivative. Okay. Now pay attention here too. DH DT equals this. this is not a complicated thing, but the function we're dealing with is H of T. So what they're telling me is that H prime DH DT actually has H in it. All right. So just pay attention to that. The variable that's in there is H. Um, it says write an equation for the tangent line at T equals zero. Well, the point we have on H of T is that H of zero is 91. That's the only point we know right now. So the only place they can ask me to find a tangent line is at zero 91. And we know tangent lines look like this. Y minus 91 equals the slope. T minus zero. Only thing we're missing is the slope and the slope is right here. And here's a super duper common thing kids do incorrectly. They plug zero into that derivative to get what the slope would be. But you don't plug zero in because the derivative has an H in it. Ah. Not a time. Time is zero, but H is 91. Yo, what is going on? There we go. Okay, so to find the derivative at time zero, which is really H equals 91, it's really negative a fourth, uh, what, 91 minus 27? What's that going to be? 84, 64, negative 16? All right. So that's the tangent line. So that's all you have to do. Super easy question. Just got to pay attention to what variables are giving you here. What's that little ding dong noise? Is that a comment? No. Okay. Oh, somebody just showed up. Okay. Um, all right. B says, and these are super typical of these uh, differential equation questions on, on the A-B test. Oh, we're not done yet. It says use it to approximate the temperature at three. Well, that means we're just going to plug in a three. So Y minus 91 is negative 16 times 3 minus 0. That means y is 91 minus 48, which is what? Uh, 43 degrees. That is approximately h of 3. Okay. Then it says use the second derivative to determine if your answer in A is an under or over estimate. Well, the reason why they're asking us to use the second derivative is because the second derivative tells us the concavity. And if you have a, ugh, a curve that's concave up and you find a tangent line to it, it doesn't matter if it's increasing or decreasing. There's concave up right there, right? If you find a tangent line to it, no matter where you draw your tangent line, it's going to be below the curve. So if, so if your curve is concave up and you use a tangent line to approximate it, like if I use this point to approximate that point, it's going to be a lower estimate, an underestimate. But if a curve is concave down and you find a tangent line to it, no matter where you find it, it's going to be above the curve. So that's going to be an overestimate if you use that to approximate the curve. So that's why they asked both those things in part B. But the second derivative is not hard. Just keep in mind when we derive this thing, the left-hand side will become d squared h over dt squared. Okay, We're just deriving the first derivative. But when you derive it, another common mistake kids will make is they'll derive h and get 1. But you don't get 1 when you derive h because we're deriving with respect to t. When you derive h, you're going to get the dh dt. So let's get you out of here. That is the second derivative, but we're going to plug in what dh dt is. And you'll notice like we've done a handful of these, and they're all very, very, very similar. All right, so the second derivative is actually positive 116 times h minus 27. So the second derivative is just this thing right here, but it also depends on h. And they want to know, um, was our estimate an over or underestimate, which means I need to use the second derivative, which we have, to see if the curve is concave up or down. So we found the tangent line at 0, 91, which means h is 91. Here, that's not a 90, that should be a 27, right? Um, so when you put the 91 into there, it 
is positive, right? We know h of t is concave up. That's what that tells us, because the second derivative is positive. And you don't need to explain this. Just you, as long as you say h t is concave up, you can say so. My estimate or our estimate. Now, because it's concave up, remember concave up. We found a tangent line to it. The tangent line is going to be below the curve. Okay. So our estimate is an under approximation. Okay. So there's that little little deuter. And then part C um, is asking, so now they're, they're kind of switching up on us here, but they're saying, hey, if T is less than 10, which doesn't really matter too much for us right yet, okay, another model. So I know they say H of T tells you the temperature of this potato, but that's just a mathematical model. And there can be more than one model to represent something. Models aren't perfect. So sometimes you have more than one. Um, here they're giving us another model called G, which they also tell us G of zero happens to be 91, okay? which makes sense because the potato's temperature at zero is 91. So any function that models that should have zero 91 on it. Okay. And they give us this derivative here and they want to know what's the internal temperature at three after we find G of T. So all they're really asking you to do here is find the solution to this differential equation. And what we talked about before was to find a solution to a differential equation. Somebody's doing some yard work. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, to find a solution, let me go inside. Come on, neighbors. Who cuts their grass on a Tuesday at 9.18 in the morning? Ah, oh. okay. Well, it doesn't sound much better all the way inside. In the house proper, but what are you going to do? Okay. Now you're looking at my other ceiling. Cool. So anyway. The way you solve a differential equation is you separate the variables and you integrate both sides. Because g is my dependent variable here, and g is in this over here, I'm going to separate that out. And when you do that, it should look like this. dg over g minus 27 to the 2 thirds is negative dt. Okay, so there's a negative over here. And you could take that with, like, you could put the negative here and make this just like a 1. But you don't need to do it. There's no point in moving the negative because you're going to solve for g anyway. So we get that. All right. Now I'm going to, I'm going to move that somewhere else just so I have a little bit of more, more room to work. So let's come over here. All right. So we've separated out the variables. Now you just integrate both sides. That's all I need to do. Integrate, integrate. The integral of the right hand side is super easy. That's just negative T plus C, right? Over here though, you got to remember this is really g minus 27 to the negative two-thirds dg. And you could do a u substitution there if you wanted to, right? Because there is an inside function. Like u would be g minus 27, which means du is just dg. Um, so that integral really just becomes the integral of u to the negative two-thirds du. And you don't even need to do a u sub. Anytime du is just d, whatever variable is, um, you can just integrate as if that whole big thing was one variable there. So, but either way, if you integrate to the negative two thirds, you get to the positive one third times three, and that equals negative T plus C from way up there. So this is three times U is really G minus 27. It's to the one third, and it's still negative T plus C. Um, and by the way, I didn't talk about this, I don't think, but uh, I, I usually find C at the end of the question. You could find C once you're done integrating, like right here, both integrals are done. You can find out what C is right there. So here's what I know. When I plug in zero, I have to get 91 back. All right. So we can just find C right here instead of waiting to the end. So G will be 20 or 91 when T is zero. So negative zero plus C. Well, 91 minus 27 is 64. And 64 to the one third, that's the cube root of 64. That's a four. So this side's really just three times four, which is 12, and that just equals C. All right, so C at this point has to be 12, which means my equation is really three G minus 27 to the one third equals negative T plus 12. And then he wants to solve for G, right? So they say, what's G of T? So you got your G by itself. So we're gonna divide by three. So that's gonna give you this. So 
follow, follow the order here. So it's negative 1 third t plus 4. Then we're going to cube both sides. And you're cubing the whole side, so you got to put it in parentheses, okay? So it's negative 1 third t plus 4 cubed. And then you're adding 27 over to that. Plus 4 cubed plus 27. So that's our model for g of t. And you can call it g of t if you want. g of t. And I think the question was, use this to approximate, again, that the temperature at 3. So let me just double check. What's the internal temperature at 3? Okay. So based on this model, it still just means plug in 3, except now we're not plugging into a tangent line. We're plugging it into an actual function that we found. So g of 3 is negative one third times three plus four cubed plus 27. And negative one third times three is negative one plus four cubed plus 27. That's three cubed, that's 27 plus 27. And that happens to be 54 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's all that they wanted for that question. Um, and again, just to highlight these types of things here, from a differential equation, you should be able to. This was not a difficult question. I think why a lot of kids messed this up or got this wrong was because they're not paying attention to variables, okay? You should be able to find a, t a tangent line. You should be able to derive it again, paying attention to what variables are there, okay? Um, I don't think it's really above them to give you something like this, like dh dt is equal to t squared h minus, I'm just making this up, whatever, and then asking you for the second derivative. And now when you find the second derivative of that, you really got to drive t squared and h, but you're driving with respect to t. So if you had to find the second derivative of that, and I'm just making this up, it'd be 2t times h plus t squared dh dt, and the 8 would go away when you derive it. But that would be the derivative, and then they want you to plug back in what dh dt is. Okay, um, just to show you that, so just, again, pay attention to what variables you've got. That's all. All right, and let's take a look at 2017 number three in a second. Let me stop this video, though.